In this video, we are going to go ahead and set up our firing ability where we can pull the trigger, it's going to send out a line trace, and it's going to hit something. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. So in order to do a line trace, we're going to need an origin point. So that's something we need to consider. Because we're creating everything in the editor, what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple scene root, which we can basically, basically use as an origin point from the tip of the gun, and we're going to fire off from there. So let's go ahead and go to our gun mesh, and we'll go ahead and here's something I'd recommend doing because it's really finicky when you mess around in the editor. Switch your transform tool over to the correct one you're going to want to use before you do anything. In this case, I know I'm going to need to move my scene root over here to the end of my gun. So rather than having to rotate like the last time I used it, I'm going to put it on movement. Let's go and add component scene, and we're going to add a scene component. Let's name this one um, gun end point. Scene components are dummy objects. They're basically a transform that you can use to do stuff with. In this case, our root is a scene component and everything's attached to it. Our gun end point is going to be a transform we use to determine the end of our gun or our firing start point. Let's drag this onto the gun mesh and let's go ahead and we're going to move it. So one thing I'd recommend that makes this a lot easier is if you put your gun back to the default non-angled position, you can orient your gun endpoint a lot simpler. Let's move our gun mesh back to zero on the rotation so that way it's straight. Let's go back to our endpoint. Let's make sure our orientation is set to world, not local. And let's go ahead and move this. Now one thing you're going to find here is because I attached the end point to the gun mesh when it was already rotated, it inherited the rotation. Let's go ahead and zero everything out here. So that way we have no scale, no rotation, and no location for our end point. Let's move this out towards the end. We'll zoom in a little bit. We can hold down the Alt key and hold down the right mouse button and move it left and right to zoom in a little bit smoother. So we'll use the F key to focus in and we'll zoom in a little bit better. Okay, so we're good centered there. Move it up and we'll find it's too high. So zero, 10, maybe five on the Z. Oh, that was not 10, that was, that was, that was more than 10. Let's see, what does that, what does that actually go up to? 50, okay, so let's try 20. Okay, that's dead in the center. Let's, let's move it up a little more. Let's try 25. Keep in mind, this will be subjective based on your gun, your size of your gun, and everything else. But our point, our goal here is we have our gun mesh and our end point, and we want the end point to literally be where we want our bullet to fire from. So there we go. So we'll set that up. That's good enough. We have our gun end point and set up at the end here. Now let's go ahead and actually do something with it. So what we need to do is do a line trace based on us using the controller. Now this is going to happen inside of our player, or our pawn in this case. Actually, you know what? Since we're calling it player, let's go ahead and rename the plot VR pawn to player. Make it simple. We know this is going to be our player. Now it's called player. Line trace is pretty simple. We are basically going to hook up to our controller and fire off a line trace. The nice thing about hooking up to our controller is it's really simple. Now if we were to pull out our controller and pull off of here and we typed in something like uh, controller, you can see you can get the controller and get some states. If we did button, you'll find nothing. If you find trigger, you'll find nothing. Well, the controller itself isn't going to give you the events. The events are input events, just like any other input events. So what we type in is actually trigger. You'll find your gamepad events, gamepad values, and various other things. And you'll find under gamepad events, motion controller. If we were to type in motion controller and spell it properly the first time, you'll actually find a lot of values. You'll find a couple things here, which is quite interesting. Under your motion controller, you'll find things such as your face buttons, grips, shoulders, thumbsticks, triggers, the axis for the trigger, face buttons, 
and everything like that. And you have them in L for left and R for right varieties. And you have things like down here, motion controller grips and thumbstick values. Unreal Engine, because it supports multiple different controller types, tries to keep things as generic as possible. That's why, for example, if we were to type in gamepad and then we were to type in, let's find here, and we find face button bottom, left, right, and top, you don't see things such as A, B, X, and Y, or X square, circle, triangle, like on the PlayStation 4. It generalizes it into if it's on the bottom, left, right, or top. Now for our motion controllers, it's doing the same thing. So even though our Oculus may only have two buttons on the top, two grip buttons, for example, your thumb pad, which has multiple um, X, Y values, as well as multiple clicking points, your Oculus Touch, which is down here, will have other things that are unique to it. And like, for example, your Oculus has these unique buttons for it, for the remote and the touch. And then you have your generic things like face button one through eight. Even though the Vive has two face buttons, it has multiple entries here just to simply have future compatibility and compatibility with other devices. So keep that in mind. Just because it's here doesn't mean your device supports it. So long way to say we're going to use the triggers on our motion controller. We're going to fire using our triggers. So let's go ahead and go to our motion controller left trigger, motion controller right trigger. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to add both of them. Because I have found when I debug, depending on if I leave the controllers on for too long, one of them may end up going dead. So I have to use the other one while I end up charging that controller. And I found for testing purposes, if I just basically swap back and forth between the controllers and I do this in advance, I don't have to worry about swapping in the events not working later. So basically, when we press either of these triggers, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do a line trace by channel. This is pretty simple. This is simply going to fire off a direct line from our start to our endpoint, check and see what's visible, and it hits, and then give us back the result. Now, like any line trace, basically we need a starting and an ending point, and we've already had, and we've set that up. We've already determined our gun endpoint should be, that's funny, gun endpoint. Um, Let's rename that to make it a little bit better. Let's try the gun firing start. Here we'll do that. We'll do gun firing start. That way at least, you know, when we're fire we're not putting the end into the start and it doesn't confuse us. So this is where the gun firing start. Yeah, it's great. Gun firing start point. Make it super clear. This is the firing start point for the gun. We need to get the world location. And this is going to tell us where in the world this location is. And this is going to be our starting point. Pretty simple. Now we need an ending point. Our ending point is basically going to be a distance straight forward from our starting point, a certain distance. That's it. Let's think this out while we're doing it. We're going to get the rotation of this starting point because that's important. Keep in mind as we move our gun and we turn our gun, our starting point is going to rotate and we want to go forward from the rotation. If we just simply get the location of our starting point and go forward from there, it's not going to take into account the rotation. So first thing we do is get our starting point, rotate it appropriately and get our rotation, and then we get the forward vector. Forward vector is basically going to give us on the x, y, and z the value forward. Simple as that. So we have a rotation, we know which way is forward, and we're going to go ahead and get a distance. If we do multiply, and we type in something like, let's say, 1500, this is going to basically figure out which direction is forward, go 1500 units ahead of that, and then that's our answer. Now, if we plug this into end, we're going to have an issue. You might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, 1500 units forward, that's where we want to end at. Well, the problem is your ending point here is arbitrary. It's from zero. You're basically saying from zero, go 1500 forward. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is get our starting point. We'll do a vector plus vector. 
and then add 1500 units forward from our starting point. And that'll be our ending point. So once we've said and done all of this funky math, here's one thing that's nice. This right here is common. Anytime you want to do a line trace in any type of game, as long as you've got a starting point and you have a distance, you can determine a straight line. And that's what we're going to do in our line trace. This number here, 1500, this is going to be subjective. This is how far forward. If you decide to make a giant level, 1500 may not be enough. You may not be able to shoot at the farthest point of your level. Or let's say you only want to be able to shoot 1500 units and you want to require the person to move around. It's all personal preference. Since what we're making is an enclosed room, I'm going to try to aim for 1500 to be enough. The nice thing is we're visually going to be able to see if it works or not, and then we can adjust it. Now visually seeing it, basically we're going to fire off our line trace, and then we're going to see it using the debug. If we change this to for duration, that means for the duration of this line trace, which is usually a couple seconds, it's going to fire off a little red line, and we're going to see it. Now if we were to go ahead and run this, and let's hook everything up and check it out. Let's turn back on our controllers because they were nice enough to go to sleep on us. We'll get our gun back. We're to aim down and fire. We are going to have, oh, this is, a, this is such a pain in the butt to test with. We're going to run into an issue. So what is the issue we are running into here? Let's see if we can figure this out. So we have our player here, and we are doing, based on the motion controller pressed, we are firing off line trace, and we should be seeing that in our debug type. First, let's see if we are even firing off. Oh, print string is such a pain in the butt in VR. Okay, so our small issue here is, for one thing, you really can't do print string in VR. It's very, very annoying. I kind of cheat and I use the quit game option and basically if it's firing properly the game's gonna quit so I'm pulling my trigger and nothing's happening so this event here our motion controller trigger is not firing off properly we need to figure out why not what we have here is a small bug it's actually caused by what we've done it's caused by Unreal Engine 4 and the Steam VR service Basically, I have more than one version of the engine running right now, more than one editor project. And due to that, and they have Steam VR enabled in more than one of them, only the last project is going to work properly. I've gone ahead and shut down my program and started it back up. Now, if we go ahead and play and we pull our trigger, we're going to quit because our triggers are not working properly. Now, let me go ahead and hit play, and we're going to run into a problem. There's a few things we haven't fixed, and we'll go ahead and cover what the issue is. So, first of all, when I'm holding my gun, you'll notice it's aimed back up again. We rotated, I rotated, you guys may have actually caught this and fixed it, but I rotated my gun to put the end point in, and unfortunately I forgot to put it back. Now, when I'm firing, it's actually firing off to the right. And if I turn my gun, you'll actually notice it's really simple to tell. It's firing towards the right. Now, why is that? Well, this one's pretty simple. In terms of forward, our forward vector, it is determined by the x rotational value of whatever you're trying to get the forward from. If we go back to here and correct some of the issues with our gun mesh, we're going to notice a small problem. Because of the way we created our mesh, we used the left view or the right view, I can't remember which one, you'll notice our rotation is slightly off on our gun. The forward vector on our gun is actually going to be this way, to the right of it. Which means our starting point for our firing, the forward vector is going to be to the right as well. Now the nice part about that is because we are messing with a scene route, a transform basically. We don't need to adjust the gun, we just need to adjust the scene transform. So... One thing you may have noticed there is there's a slight issue with, again, selecting. I can't change my different transform types easily. 
by just simply hitting my hotkeys. If you have that issue, shut down your player and come back, or click on what you want and click on your transform gizmos up here. In our case, we want to rotate. Now again, there we go. I want to rotate this 90 degrees. I want to pull this back to our direction. And you'll notice now our forward direction on our firing point is going to be the direction we want. So if we go ahead and save this, let's take our gun mesh and negative 40 on the X again to drop it back down. We'll save it and we'll run. And now we'll go ahead and test this out. Now when I hold my gun, it feels more natural. I aim down and fire. Well, there we go. We can actually see our trace going forward appropriately. If we were to aim up, it's going to fire up. In any direction we fire a gun, we're going to get a trace forward from that position. So that is going to wrap up this video. We've gone ahead and set up our trace point. We've determined a few different issues and worked through them. In our next one, since we really don't have anything fun to shoot at, let's go ahead and set up our play environment. So we're going to set up a basic room and a few basic materials so we get a, you know, kind of like a holodeck scene from Star Trek.